ಶರ್ಮಣೀಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಓರ್ ಬಿ ಲೌಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ ಮೇ ಕಟ್ ಹೋ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಭಗತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯೋ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ no doubt there are so many ways described in hindu hindu religion to reach up to god but each and every ways towards god they have their own culture meaning that they have their own festival their celebrations and everything without celebration without festival there is no any hindu way up to god now even though there are many ways there are different types of philosophies and belief only in hindu but still many accept lord krishna as a incarnation of god not many but most of the hindu philosophers they accept lord krishna as a incarnation of god and i'm talking about lord krishna because yesterday we have celebrated one of the greatest festival of hindu culture that is, that is janmashtami because lord krishna before 5000 years lord krishna appeared on this earth he was an incarnation of god himself the more the main purpose of the incarnation of lord krishna was to demolish the demon like kans duryodhan and so many other demons now the another reason for taking birth on this earth as a human that is to give eternal bliss eternal happiness eternal enjoyment to his devotees and spread religion on this earth that is the another reason behind taking birth on this earth but on the, on the auspicious day of shravan vadi atham meaning just as we have celebrated yesterday the birthday of lord sri krishna on the, on that auspicious day before 5000 years Lord Krishna himself appeared in Mathura in India. Mathura is situated in Uttar Pradesh state in India, the north middle part of India. But the tragedy was that Lord even though Lord Krishna was an incarnation of God himself, still he assumed a human form in a jail, in a prison. because bhagwan's father and mother vasudev and devki they caught by kans and that's why they have to live in a prison now bhagwan appear as a human being in a prison but the most important thing is that bhagwan appeared in a prison meaning he born in prison but the reason for taking a, b- a birth in a prison to uh, the reason behind that and the main purpose to taking birth in a prison that is to relieve his devotees relieve so many spiritual aspirant 
from the prison of illusion now after taking birth on this earth lord sri krishna he had we know perform many kinds of charitras even in his very little age as a child he had killed many demons now after when he gra- gradually grow up and become young he attack not sim- uh, not simply attack but when he entered into mathura he killed a giant elephant and then after he fought with a wrestler and even he was a young boy and the wrestler they have uh, they are very mature and uh, very famous wrestler in the nation still he conquer all of the wrestler and the because of fighting with krishna all those wrestlers the well known wrestler of the nation they all meet their death then after kans himself try to kill krishna on the wrestling ring but kans himself got his unmature death now there after relieving people from the from the uh, many problems because of this kans and even the father and mother vasudev and devki they also relieved from the prison now there after lord sri krishna become a king and there after perform many kinds of charitras and even after becoming ki- king he killed many demons but then after he develop his own state on the small tiny island he had created because he is the lord krishna we know he is an incarnation of god so he can do whatever he wishes and that's why he created a divine a divine capital town named dwarka in the amid uh, uh, on the tiny island now there he ruled the kingdom and uh, after becoming a king of, of dwarka he also took part in a great battle of mahabharat there he helped pandavas and he himself become a charioteer of arjun now after giving all kinds of help in a battle after completing the battle he again came back to dwarka and after performing many charitras he himself decided to go back to his abode golok and in this way he had finished his lifetime but before starting the war of mahabharat lord sri krishna gave an eternal knowledge to arjun and that knowledge that eternal knowledge is composed in a great holy book of hindu religion and that is shrimad bhagavad gita now on the same day sadguru sri ramanand swami also born in ayodhya before 250 years ramanand swami's childhood name was sri ram his father and mother ajay sharma and sumati sharma now after assuming a form as a human being raman and swami he was already uh, he was actually eternal liberated soul meaning a mukt from dham but still to preach the other spread message of bhagwan himself he assume uh, assume a human birth on this earth and that's why he had no kind of attachment no any worldly desire no 
any kind of he had worldly attachment or attraction towards any kind of attractive things or person even from his childhood and because he has detached nature he asked his parent i want to go for it i want to go to travel to uh, throughout nation and want to visit so many religious places pilgrimage places but as his age was not mature his father didn't uh, give him permission to go for a travel but sri ram raman and swami he firmly explained to his father and mother i have decided in my mind to go for tra- uh, to go for traveling throughout the nation and visited all the pilgrimage places and that's why even though you could not give me permission still i have decided and so i want to go and when parents so the firmness of raman and swami meaning uh, sri ram so they had to give permission and after getting permission sri ram wander one place to another travel one city to another and finally he reached in gujarat there he found a uh, guru raman uh, one uh, one guru atman and swami atman and swami was very very famous at the time and he had attained a uh, self realization he he had attained many many divine powers by the ashtanga yoga as well as he attained the final stage of ashtanga yoga that is samadhi and because of samadhi he can do many things which cannot done by a, an ordinary human being meaning a divine power he attained by this samadhi but the one lacking factor in atman and swami's life that is he understand he believe god as a god has no any kind of form meaning he understand god as a formless being but actually god has a divine form and that's why when raman and swami himself got the same state like atman and swami what atman and swami can see in a meditation the divine light of bhagwan's divine abode the same light can be seen by raman and swami in meditation but raman and swami could not feel as because he want to see god himself he want to see god face to face and that's why when raman and swami ask atman and swami guru i cannot see the form of lord then atman and swami ask then what you can see then raman and swami said i can see only a divine light but not more than that then atman and swami said that divine light itself a form of god when raman and swami listen this about the formness of bhagwan then he became unconscious at the same time and fell on the earth after some time when he got consciousness then as he understood god as a divine uh, god with a divine form and that's why he even renounced his guru atman and swami now after that raman and swami travel towards southern part of india there he reach sri rangam a uh, place of sri ramanujacharya ramanujacharya appear on this earth many thousand years before but at that place where ramanujacharya uh leave his body his physical body and go back to the house of god 
but the interesting thing was that his body even today also remain as it is because the indian old uh, indian ancient medical science it has a many kind of technique to keep body as it is and that's why they have the devotees of ramanujacharya had kept the ramanujacharya's body as it is even we can have darshan of the same body today there ramanand swami stayed and he studied many, uh, all the scriptures of ramanujacharya and he by his heart he accepted ramanujacharya as his guru now finally one day ramanand swami pray very much to ramanujacharya because he want initiation from a guru because out a without accepting ones as his disciple one cannot become a disciple and one cannot get an eternal knowledge or eternal bliss of bhagwan that's why ramanand swami desired to get an initiation ramanand swami divinely appeared in his dream and gave him an initiation and uh, the four signs a uh, divine signs and a uh, mark on his on forehead of ramanand swami remain as it was when he wake up early in the morning then ramanand swami understood this was not a dream but this is a true story this is a reality raman raman yacharya divinely appeared to me and he himself gave me an initiation now after that as raman yacharya's divine order divine command raman and swami wandered one place to another to preach raman yacharya's divine message and spread the true and correct method of devotion of lord krishna after completing his journey to southern part he reached vrindavan there he spread message of ramanuja acharya and true method of worshiping bhagwan now after that he reached uh raman swami again came back to gujarat and he established a one ashram in lodz there are many ashrams but one of them was in lodz there nilkantwarni himself bhagwan swami narayan himself came as a nilkantwarni in lodz and he stay forever in our fellowship the raman raman swami was the founder of this fellowship but most of the people even today could not know this fact that raman and swami was the founder of our fellowship but most of the time raman and swami when he spoke in an assembly many times he described that i am merely a drum beater the main hero of the play who will come short period of time when nilkantwarni came in lodge and at the time ramanand swami was in bhuj after some months when they meet ramanand swami and nilkantwarni at the time ramanand swami declare till today I described many times that I am merely a drum beater and the main hero of the play he'll come this nilkantwarni is the hero he is the god himself i am his servant so ramanand swami knew that this is god himself but the devotees of ramanand swami they understood ramanand swami himself is god but as ramanand swami commanded to his devotees not to worship 
हिम बट वर्सिव नीलकंठ मीनिंग वर्सिव भगवान स्वामीनारायण दिस इज वॉट द फाइनल मैसेज ऑफ रामानंद स्वामी फॉर हिज ड्यूटीज एंड दैट्स वाई ऑल द ड्यूटीज ऑफ रामानंद स्वामी दे बिकम अ ड्यूटी ऑफ भगवान स्वामीनारायण एंड इन दिस वे द फाउंडर ऑफ अवर फेलोशिप वॉज रामानंद स्वामी हिमसेल्फ भगवान स्वामीनारायण हिमसेल्फ एज सेफ रामानंद स्वामी एज इज गुरु not only that but bhagwan himself gave a perfect and all kind of respect to guru ramanand swami even as a disciple the role of disciple when bhagwan swami narayan play as a role of disciple he himself asks to boons from his guru ramanand swami when he become Uh, at the time of becoming a head of this fellowship in this way ramanand swami had performed a perfect role of a perfect guru for preaching us this is what the short brief life sketch of ramanand swami but more than that for us the great news that was yesterday was a uh, birthday of our pujya nishkam swami also we have celebrated with great festival here in mandir but when uh, now you have if question why i am talking about guru ramanand swami and swami because in the vachanamrut bhagwan swami narayan himself says in the 21st vachanamrut of gadda middle chapter bhagwan himself says in each and every scripture either the divine incident from the life of god or divine incident from the life of bhagwan's ekantik sant are described in the scriptures that's why i am talking about guru ramanand swami's life sketch because it it is already written in the bhakta chintamani's 36 37 and 38 chapter now puja nishkam swami we cannot compare him with any other santo any other personality in this world because his life is like muktanand swami we cannot compare muktanand swami with any other sant or any other person in the same way swami's life his lifestyle his everything is like muktanand swami that's why we can only say for him that he is or his saintliness is like an ocean just as we cannot measure the ocean in the same way we cannot measure we cannot fully describe we cannot fully glorify his life and that's why today we we should pray unto guru ramanand swami's feet as well as pujya swami's feet that please grant us please source your mercy upon us so that we can also even know your life and if we know your life you are actually living and by that we can also sanctify our own life by assuming a drop of nectar from your life shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jay
प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज आर बिलवेड पूज्य पाद गुरु जी पूज्य संतो ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोडीज जय स्वामी नारायण ऑक्सीजन इज द मोस्ट फंडामेंटल एलिमेंट on earth oxygen is present everywhere we know of each and every area of this whole earth contains oxygen yet we know it's visible yet it's invisible to our eyes we know it's there how because every day we breathe it if we couldn't or if it wasn't there we wouldn't be here but the proof that oxygen is present everywhere is that we are alive not only that but let's go a little more in detail atom the atom is in everything everyone and it's everywhere yet it's invisible to our eyes we cannot see it but it is proven that atoms exist and due to that we believe in atoms or the theory of atom just like that it is a fundamental belief of hinduism that god is ever present in every one everything and it everywhere yet god cannot be physically seen in things like a tree or like a chair or like even your brother but we know he's there this is because god's omnipresence is beyond the physical perspective perspective of the mind and senses what do i mean by that well, let me give you an example just like how we mention that the atom is present everywhere yet we can't see it but we know it's there but what if i told you there's a special kind of microscope called the electron microscope that can actually observe atoms that can actually experience and see atoms to that microscopic level in the same particular manner just like how the electro electron microscope can is able to view and see the minute atom in the same way when one develops such kind of vision one will be able to see god as well the hindu scriptures provide a clear explanation of this matter they guide the aspirant to the physical forms of god god is present everywhere we believe but we cannot see him that's the problem but there's another solution or you can say there's a better way to observe him how so well today's topic is just like how god is present everywhere we believe him to be especially present in his own idol he is ever present in the ekantik satpurush meaning the god realized self realized ekantik saint the true saint you can say now the main principle at hand is that according to hindu scriptures the presence of god is felt more or less according to the purity of the entity what does that mean well if we meet and suppose you've probably one of you have probably been to new york city now in the busy sidewalks of new york city there is just thousands and thousands of people crossing each and every road and going by and 
you just pick a random person compared to this person if you compare it to the Ekantik Satpurush the God realized saint how much is God's present in that saint versus that person that you picked randomly of the streets of New York meaning God is present even in each and every person but just to a certain degree the more purified the person is the more God's present is in that person for example compared to a clear light bulb imagine an opaque light bulb what gives more brightness the clear light bulb or the opaque light bulb obviously it's a clear one why because there's no kind of screen or mask in present or that is not guiding the light to that object or that person meaning the light is comes clear crystal clear compared to the opaque light bulb which is very it's a it's a little grayed out meaning it's not completely it doesn't give give complete shineness in the same exact manner god pres is present in such kind of scene so he is compared to the clear light bulb versus that person that random person is such an opaque light bulb meaning god is present everywhere even in each and every person but to a certain degree that's what makes the ekantik satpurush the true god realized saint something more someone unique someone beyond our comprehension if i can say now keeping that example in mind obviously we go to mandirs we go to temples and we see the idol of god there present and when we look at such an idol since this idol seems like it has no other characteristics no other virtues we believe it to be a mere statue and that's our mistake how so well according to the vachnamrut gadara first chapter 68th vachnamrut bhagwan himself says the murtis which god has given for worship by his command are of eight types god himself personally enters those murtis and resides within them in the same way god also resides in the heart of the saint therefore the saint should be respected in the same manner as that idol of god god is present in the idol or in the form of god, in the in his own idol even if it's made out of marble or some other stone or any kind of material but god is present in that idol in the same exact manner what this vachamra is trying to say is that god is also present in such an ekantik satpurush there is a verse that i want to sing with you and also explain so you understand maybe some of you have heard it sant hune hunte vadi sant re ema shri mukhe kahe bhagavant re sant man jo mari murati re tema pher nathi ek rati re tema pher nathi ek rati re meaning the form of the saint and the form of myself meaning god himself is one there is not even the slightest trace of difference between my saint and myself this is you can say the bow or this is pretty much the feeling of this verse bhagwan himself has spoken this verse so bhagwan himself is saying that just like myself i am present in idols in the same way way i am present in my saint so seeing that one should understand that even if one sees the idol of god made out of stone or metal one should not feel that it's just a mere statue how so well obviously from me saying this and you 
understanding and believing it is very hard. But if I give you a couple of examples in the form of stories, you'd be better able to perceive what I'm trying to say. Well, at one time, our Puja Guruji, he has this Thakurji, meaning this small idol of God you're probably seeing on the screen here. That idol of God, he serves every day in the morning. He does the Abhishek, meaning he bathes this idol. He dresses it in different, different clothing and different ornaments, as you can see. And everywhere Guruji goes, he also brings this Thakurji with him. So Guruji tends to travel many, many areas and do many, many pilgrimages. So at one time, Puja Guruji went to Africa. And there in Africa, Puja Guruji obviously had brought his Thakurji. And how is this Thakurji served? Well, just like how we need food, just like how we need clothing, just like how we need sleep, Thakurji is provided the same. Meaning every day, morning, afternoon, mid-afternoon, mid uh, evening, and nighttime, it, this Thakurji is served food and then Puja Guruji and Santos partake in that prasad. So at the late night in that temple, Thakurji has this shrine where Thakurji is placed and in front of the in front of Thakurji there's different kinds of foods offered. At the night time, usually Bhagwan is offered uh, sugar milk, warm sugar milk. And at one incident, that Thakurji was offered a big bowl of sugar milk and a spoon was given for drinking and usually the tradition is that there is a curtain that closes over when Bhagwan eats because we cannot see Bhagwan eat that's a kind of ritual so when Bhagwan eats we don't disturb him so in that time that whole curtain was closed and Bhagwan was offered that milk just in about 10-15 minutes after Bhagwan was done drinking his milk we imagine the bertha would open the curtain would open and at this time usually this would happen every day every night right but this time when the curtain opened the whole milk the whole bowl was empty and Bhagwan had drank that milk you're probably wondering how is that possible someone must have emptied that milk bowl out or something like that but I can tell you that no one else could go in such an area because that place was secluded and only only if the curtain opened one can see and one can actually see that there is no one that can possibly go there without opening the curtain such was kind of the situation yet Guruji was obviously new and he was obviously knew that this is not anything phenomenal for him because this is but he knows that Bhagwan eats no matter if the food disappears or not but just to prove that Bhagwan is not a mere statue, Bhagwan is actually there, present in that idol. Bhagwan actually drank that milk. Not only that, I'm reminded of another incident in our Loya Mandir. In India, there is a remote village by the name of Loya, where Puja Guruji has an establishment there, and he has a temple there. And just like how here in Loya Dam, New Jersey, we have a Gansham Maharaj in the same way in Loya, India there is a Gansham Maharaj and Gansham Maharaj is served with different ornaments and clothing and food in the same particular manner and at that time the Pujari meaning the one who served these kinds of ornaments and these kinds of uh, clothing and f food was Pujya Satsang Vallabh Swami Pujya Satsang Vallabh Swami is a very virtuous saint in our mandal and he was serving Gansham Maharaj. I'm going to explain the situation as best as possible. That temple has two floors to it. The bottom floor has Gansham Maharaj and the second floor is the Sant Nivas where Santos live and where they keep all the clothing for Gansham Maharaj. So here's what had happened. In the morning it's probably about 4.35 a.m. and Pujya uh, Satsang Swami Obviously, he would first uh, select a clothing that he would like from the Santnivas in that second floor and then go down to wake up Maharaj 
So he selected a clothing that he liked, and then he went down uh, with that clothing, and uh, you know he went inside the curtain, and he woke up Bhagwan with a bell, and he just placed those vagas, those clothing, right there on the side. Then after seeing those clothing for a little bit, he decided that he wanted to uh, put some other vaga or put some other clothing on Maharaj, meaning he didn't like the one that he chose. But he didn't take it upstairs, he just left it on the side there, next to Gansha Maharaj. Then Swami went upstairs again and to select a new pair of clothing. Swami found another pair of nice clothing that he thought that would better suit Maharaj on that particular day. So Swami took the vagas, brought, brought it down, and when he entered the area where Gansha Maharaj was, Gansha Maharaj was already in the dress that Swami had previously selected. Meaning, Bhagwan himself had worn those clothes. You're probably wondering again that some other Swami probably put those clothes on Maharaj. But no, at that time, no other Santos were awake. Only Puja Swami was awake. And Puja Swami himself witnessed this incident in front of his eyes that when he went downstairs, obviously he knew that no one was awake. But when he went downstairs and opened the curtain to you know, put on the new pair of clothing that he had selected for Maharaj, Maharaj had already worn the previous clothing that he had selected. Just imagine how present Bhagwan is in his idol. What I'm trying to prove here is that just how Bhagwan is present in his idol, he is ever present in his Ekantik Satpurush as well, just like that. There is no other difference. Just to make things clear, the idol of God is for darshan, for bliss, for our own bliss. How so? Because we cannot experience God yet on such a level where Bhagwan can talk to us and we can talk to Him and we can also interact with Him in different, different ways. So, when we come to Mandir, we see Gansha Maharaj sometimes dressed in pink colored clothing. Sometimes we see Gansha Maharaj in winter workshop. Uh, last year, winter workshop 2014, about eight months ago, eight, nine months ago, uh, Gansha Maharaj w uh, wore a costume of Santa Claus. So at that present time, we develop some kind of emotional, you know, bow or emotional, uh, we get more feeling toward Maharaj. So Maharaj dresses up in different manners just for the pleasure of the devotee's eyes just so that devotee can remember him in that particular manner. In that fashion, the idol of the Satpurush is for guidance. Meaning, the Satpurush, in God is obviously present in the Satpurush, but God is present how so? He is not present in such a way that he can give his bliss via his darshan. No, that is for the idol of God. But how does Maharaj give his bliss through the Satpurush by giving guidance through the Satpurush, by giving different different kinds of techniques to attain God. This is how Bhagwan is present in the Satpurush. In the time of Sadguru Gunatitan Swami, there's a very, very interesting story that Swami had arrived in the village of Malia, if I'm saying that correctly. There there was a person called Ramo. Now Ramo was this is was this was his usual technique. He would sit underneath a tree and he would eat meat and he would drink alcohol. All day, all night, this is his ever routine. And this is what he would do. So Puja Swami must have been crossing that area where he, uh Ramo was sitting and he just saw Ramo there. And Puja Swami just asked Ramo Ramo, would a lion eat jalebi? Jalebi is a kind of sweet in India, if you don't know. But I'm going to replace jalebi with cotton candy, okay? So Swami asked, Ramo, would a lion eat cotton candy? Obviously, Ramo said, no, Swami. Why would he eat cotton candy? It's not his food. That food is for humans, obviously. Swami remarked, animals don't eat food that is meant for men. 
men, but men eat food that is meant for animals. What do you think about this? Just on hearing this, Ramo thought that this was a very good point that Swami had made. And due to that, just to due to one small guidance, one small statement, Ramo completely abandoned his bad habits of eating meat and drinking alcohol and he became a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, proving that the Ekantik Satpurusha's presence is very, very valid in the form that God is present through him. And through that guidance, that person changes his life. Just imagine if in the place of Gunatinan Swami, it was some other random person that you didn't know. And that person made the same exact statement at the same exact time at the very same with the same exact emotion that Swami had made everything same even let's say that that person was dressed as a saint okay but the effectiveness that that saint or the effectiveness that that person would say the same statement versus the effectiveness of Sadguru Gunathya and Swami obviously would make a great difference. If that person had said the same statement, nothing would have happened. But Sadhguru Gunathyan Swami made the same statement and he completely changed his perspective, his life. And due to that, he became very, very happy. So, in the end, to wrap it up, we always tend to <clears throat> believe that God is present, obviously, because we are the followers of God. But not only that, we believe that God to be present in the idol of God. That's also factual for us. But it's very hard for us to believe that God is present through the Ekantik Satpurush, just like our Pujipad Guruji. And due to that, there is many, many flaws that are not, you can say, destroyed or that are not overcome. But if we can understand that Whatever Pujipa the Guruji is doing, whatever action he's performing, however he's behaving, however he's, whatever he's acting or like, everything is because that Bhagwan himself is present inside of him doing each and every action. Then we would not have any flaws within us and we would become completely within Bhagwan. So understand that just like how God is present in his idol. God is also present in his Ekantik Satpurush, just like our Puja Guruji. Gansham Maharaj Nijay.